Hello everybody and welcome back to the Endgame series. So we are going to continue with Rook Endgames. Hello Senpai. So we are going to continue with the Rook Endgame series. And before we saw uh, Endgames in which there was a Rook on one side and Pawns on other sides. And now we will be seeing endgames in which both of the sides have rooks. So this is going to be very in interesting as well as instructive. Hello Ash. Sopnil, hello. So let me get on leeches. I won big tournament, congratulations! Well done! That's very cool! Senpai, I'm good! Thank you for asking, hope you're doing well too! Okay, now everything is set on leeches. So we will be looking at endgames from this very famous book called as the Dovritsky's Endgame Manual. And in the introduction they say, Rook endgames are perhaps the most important and most difficult kind of endgame. Most important because they occur in practice much more often than other endgames. And most difficult because one must absorb and remember a much greater volume of knowledge than in endings with other material relationships. So let's start with the first uh, position. Hello player. So first we have to try to understand the different uh, strategies in these end games. King e8, pawn on e7, white rook f1, black king g7 and rook on a2 Do you know chess talk? I won his Diwali chess arena. I bersect every game and came with score of 53. More than 400 people were there. Very cool, Ash. Very cool. I'm so happy for you. So this is a white to play and win. And this is the famous Lucena position. Hello, smart sky. So this is the famous Lucena position in which there will be building of bridge to promote. Yes, let's learn end games now. So this position has many techniques for white to win, but uh, one is most prominent and it is called as building of bridge. So if we start playing the king directly, the pawn is going this side. If we start playing the king, black will give checks. And then, for example, if we go here, checks, and there is no way to get out of these checks. And white has to go back again to e8. So that is why we need to help. We need to take help of this rook. And now we start with rook g1 check, cutting off this king. If king goes to f6, 
then we just play king f8 and next move will be queen even if he gives check we make a queen and win so black goes on the h file king h7 and now we begin building this bridge the rook g4 move is the best move here and now we see why it is called as building the bridge so why black plays rook d2 and now we bring the king out king f7 check king f6 and after king e5 we bring this rook in the middle and this is called as building of bridge we make a bridge between this and next move we will be able to promote this you like this puzzle yes very famous puzzle And they say it is worth mentioning that white has other winning options too in this position. For example, white can play rook g1, king h7 and just rook e1, supporting this promotion. And when black starts giving check or play king g7, we just move the king. And now we can just run all the way and attack the rook and next move we can promote the pawn. So this is another way. Also, there is a rook g1 check, king at 7 and a rook d1. And if king g7, we bring the king out. There is no check on d2 and if we place check on a7, we bring the rook in between and stop these checks. Rook a8, then rook d8. And white wins. Hello Frank. Yes. I'm also happy to be back. Hello Daksh. King E8. Now we have the same position. Thank you for following. We have the same position with black to play. So King E8. Pawn E7. King G7. Rook F1. And rook a2. I am good. I am good. I took a small break from streaming because I had to solve some technical issues with my computer. So I had to take break for 2-3 days. But today everything looks good. I hope so. And all is well. Let me flip this board. I'm playing very bad today. Just a bad day, Daksh. Don't worry about it. Tomorrow would be better. Setup is looking professional. Was this the same earlier? I changed some things. So, thank you for uh, noticing that. So exactly same position and black to play. So with white what we did was we played rook g1 and when the king moved we played rook g4 and we built a bridge. But if the same position is black to play, black can make a draw here. So black has to start giving checks. If black does not do anything then white will just continue with this plan. So black plays rook a8 check, king d7, rook a7 and this checks with the draw. King c7 then rook a7 and the king can't move because the pawn will be lost. And here if white plays a uh, king c5 trying to attack the rook if you give check black has to just play rook e6 and this pawn will be lost
king d8 pawn d7 uh, rook a2 black king f7 and white rook f1 uh, e1 Hello, Masood. So it's similar position except that we shifted all the pieces one file to the left. All the pieces one file to the left. And now black to play does not draw this position because when black plays rook a8, king c7, check. There is no more uh, space for black to give checks. So they have given here conclusion hence we can conclude first if the pawn is on the seventh rank multiple winning methods exist the most important ones are building a bridge and a rook maneuver to protect from side checks so these two are most important winning methods in this rook and games so one is to build a bridge like that and other is to stop the side checks with the rook When the king of the weaker side, so in this case black is the weaker side, when the king of the weaker side is cut off from the pawn, the only defensive technique is side checks. So the, if the king is far away from the pawn, then black has only one way to try to defend it and it is from the side checks. This side. Then the third is a rook pursuit of the enemy king can only be successful when the rook and the pawn are separated by three lines. So side checks only work when there are three squares between the rook and the pawn. So in this case, when the rook is here, there are only two squares, so it does not work. So for this to work, black's rook should be on this side, so that there will be three squares, and king should be on the opposite side, and then black should try to give checks from this side. So when you have such a position, and you have to choose from which side to give checks, go for the longer side. Uh, the correct positioning of forces for the weaker king, weaker side is to keep the king on the short side and the rook on the long side. So now this is short side and this is long side. So black should try to keep on this side, keep the king on this side and rook on this side. Next one. Next is a tragic comedy. King e6. Black king at 7. Rook d3. Rook c1. Uh, and white pawn f6. Hello Akshay Kul. How are you doing? <laughs> You're bored. What happened? This is a game position. And here in the game, white played a rook h3 check. Missing your streams. Thank you so much. I was trying to resolve some technical things, that's why I took a break for 2-3 days. But now I'm back. So what is the correct way to win this endgame for white? They have asked here the question.
Yes, seventh rank is important. So why to play and win? How to win this end game? Hello Crystal, King e7 with the idea f7 f8 also possible but black will give checks. Rook d5, interesting, try to create a barrier. So there are many ways for white to play but they say that the simple method here is just to play f7. Why not? Why not to play f7? Because if black plays king g7 we have this check. And if king f8 there is mate, so he cannot stop with the king. If he starts giving check, then we have rook d6 or even king e7, king e7 and this is winning. And if black starts giving check from e1, rook e1 check, king f6, rook f1, they say king goes to f8 with the idea check and king g8. And if black plays rook a1, check and king goes to g8 and white wins i'm sorry but i have to leave need to prepare for big tournament when is your tournament ash and good luck to you so here the simple f7 wins for white but in the game white played rook h3 king g6 and rook g3 check Black resigned as he felt to recognize that the position has become a drawn position now. So Black thought he is losing and he just resigned. But how to draw this? Black should play king h7. And f7 now is a rook c8. So the difference is that before the rook was standing on the d file and now on the g file so before we were trying to play king e7 and rook was holding these checks thank you for following raja the rook was holding these checks but now the rook is misplaced and after king e7 rook c7 check King e8, rook c8 check, king d7, we just wait and we have the long side now for the rooks and this checks will become a draw for black. Next one. King e7, pawn on f7, rook on c7, rook g1, king h8, and white to play. Yes, these are the most difficult end games. These are supposed to be the most difficult ones. White to play, and the king is under check, so it depends where we should move the king.
king e8, he will give check rook c8. If king d7, rook a8. So this check. And if you go e7, it's a repetition. And king d7, then rook a8. And the rook is on the long side. So how to make progress after that? This looks very tricky. I'm thinking king f6 so that if rook c8 there is mate on h1 but he will give the check again. Thank you Bothetic for following. King e6. King e6, interesting. So now I can't give check because of king d7. So he has to play rook c8. He has to play rook c8. Yes, king c6, king e6 looks good, but rook c8 will be played. Has to be some trick after that to get out of these checks. King f6 is the last option. But what after that? That is the question. What after rook c8? I mean, king f6, he will go rook c6. King e6, rook c8, rook c1. He will go rook a8, let's say. Rook h1. Okay, king f6, the threat is checkmate, so he will play rook c6. And if we play king e6 first move, he will go rook c8. King f6, rook c1, rook h1. This then check, where will the king go? Okay, let's see the analysis. This is going to be very tricky. This is a composition by Kopev in 1953. And they say that the unlucky placement of the king Unlucky placement of black kings decides the result of this position. So first start with king f6. Black is forced to play rook c6 check. Because rook c8 there is checkmate rook h1. And now the threat is also promotion. Rook c6 check. King e5. black has two moves rook c5 or rook c8 rook c8 is the main move but if you place rook c5 then king d6 rook c8 and now just rook e1 and rook e8 yes now rook e1 and even if king g7 we have this and there is no side checks right now. So that is why here black plays rook c8. 
and here is a fantastic move by white and that is a rook g6 So let's say black plays king h7, rook c6, black cannot take because there will be queen and after the rook moves white plays king f6 and now white is in time to play rook e6 followed by rook e8. The rook protects the king from side checks and black is helpless against rook e6 and rook e8 so this was a long line so this move was important rook g6 and then we get this tempo of this move And if he waits, rook e6 and black cannot save after rook e8. So let's say he plays this and now we can even just run away with the king. We can just run away. Black can't stop. And king will attack soon this rook. King g6, black king g8, rook b1, black rook a8 and pawn on f6. And white to play and win. Do you find out the solution to such positions in your over the board games or do professional players also have trouble? That's I don't know the answers to this. I'm also analyzing with you. So I don't know the answers, but these end games are for analyzing and trying to understand the ideas. But of course we get in trouble, but uh, the more we try to train, the more it's helpful during the on on the board games. Because uh, these ideas are almost impossible to find during the games especially with low on time so the more ideas we know even if we don't know the exact moves during the games we know that something exists like this that white can win in such a way and then we can try to find out during the games so we will just try to understand the ideas and then it will be useful for us thank you heaven owned Rook b7, rook c8, rook g7, king f8, rook h7. Yes, yes, you are right. That's the way. So now, we start with rook b7, taking control of the 7th rank. Black cannot move the rook, because there is rook b8 checkmate. So he just has to wait. We give this check. And now doesn't matter he plays king h8 or king f8 for both we will play king at 7 rook at 7 sorry for both this moves we will play rook at 7 so this is more easier because we just check check and rook h8 and if he goes to king f8 still rook at 7 with this idea rook h8 is winning and even if he defends the rook, we just exchange and promote the spawn. So this is winning for white. Yes, cutting off the king is an important idea. 
and black has to remain on the 8th rank. He can't move the rook because of this mate. And nothing black can do. Yes, this is winning for white. Doesn't matter. Even if he goes to f8, we just check. And f7 anyway is winning. King g6, black king g8, pawn f6, and a rook b1, rook a7, black to play. So it's almost same position, but black rook now stands on a7 instead of a8. Sorry, it stands on a7 and now there is a beautiful defensive idea for black in this position. Black to play and draw. <laughs> yes, rook g7. So look at this beautiful idea. Again, if we just defend in a passive way with rook a8, we know that white will win after rook b7 we just saw. So black has to do something. And this idea comes uh, on the board right now. Rook g7 check. If white takes the rook, it's a stalemate. So white king has to move back. King f5. And now the rook should be placed behind. Rook g2. And black gives check. And makes a draw so let's say white tries to go he just gives check and there is no way for white to defend this checks one second where are my notation Yes, and if white gives check, rook b8, we just play king f7. And still there is no way to make a progress here. If he tries to uh, shield with the rook, let's say rook b5. And with check he plays rook e5. We can just capture and go into a drawn pawn end game. Capture, capture, king f7. And we know this is a theoretically drawn position. Again, still mate. So the idea for black in this kind of position is to try to bring the rook behind and give checks. But if he plays rook a2 directly, there is mate. So we need to do this after rook g7 and bring the rook back. And we just give checks and it is a draw. White king e6, pawn f6, black king f8, rook b1, and a rook a8. So again, same position except that in this the king is not placed on g6, instead it is on e6 and it makes a big difference, white to play. And they have asked here, can white win or is it a draw if we just change the king's position from g6 to e6.
it's white to move. If it's black to move, we know that black will give check and then go back on a2 and make a draw. Rook b7 with the same idea. Rook a6, king f5. And now here, instead give check, black will play rook a1. Yes, and interestingly, this is going to be a draw this time. So they say king on g6 is winning for white. But if we just play the king on e6, it's going to be a draw. Because white cannot make progress. If it tries to go to g6 by playing king f5, black just plays rook a2 and starts giving checks again. And if white plays rook b7, first give check. And when king moves, then rook a1 and again checks. And this is a draw. So if you are playing the weaker side, we should try to get the rook behind to give checks. King on h6, black king g8, pawn on g6, white rook b1, black rook a8. Now same position again but one file shifted to the right side. So the position before was black king here and this all was towards this side. And now we move that, so the bishop's pawn becomes a knight's pawn now. White to play. Can white win if the pawn is a knight's pawn? Even if we play rook b7, there is no way we can make any progress, I think. Rook b7, he will just wait. Rook c8. And after this check, how to make progress in this position? Because now the king goes to h8. And if we give check king g8, there is no way to play g7 because of rook c6 check. So first move rook b7, rook c8, rook g7 and king h8 is the move for black and black makes a draw. They say king f8 will be a blunder, king f8 will be a blunder in view of king h7. And white will win this position because next rook g8 is the threat. And this will be a winning position even if he moves the rook away rook g8 and then we can just bring the king move the pawn and win slowly this end game next we can bring this rook check and do this building of bridge and win okay we don't need to calculate all that but the king f8 is a mistake the so black should play king h8 and king h8 is a draw. And they write here the conclusion. Passive defense hold against a knight pawn but loses against a bishop pawn or a central pawn. So passive defense means black just holds by keeping the rook on the last rank. This is called as the passive defense. Black just doesn't try to make any activity. Very passive. Just moves the rook up here and there. The passive defense works against a knight spawn so these are knight spawn g file and the b file these are knight spawns so it works against them 
but loses against a bishop pawn or a central pawn. So if the pawns are central or bishop, then black should try active defense, which is trying to go and give checks like that. Okay, now what will happen in this position? So we have again a knight spawn, king at 6, pawn on g6, g4, a rook on b7, king g8, and a rook on a8, white to play. So we know that if this pawn did not exist, it's a draw. But now there is a double pawn on g4. And does it change the result of this position? Yes, this is white to play and win now. White to play and win. Do you see any ideas to, for white to win this? This time we can prevent king checks with our second pawn. So how do we begin? Black will keep up with the passive defense. So even if we push the pawns all the way, black will just keep playing rook c8, rook a8, rook g7, then king h8 as we saw earlier. Black will keep up with the passive defense, he can't do much anyway. And we have to be very careful with stalemate ideas. For example, if we play g5, and let's say we have to be very careful, g5, and if we play g6, we can give this check, and this pawn cannot actually help because black will just take it, and it is going to be a stalemate if we take it. g5, black will play rook c8. What is the winning idea in this position? Hello, just to go. Nice to see you. <laughs> we missed you so much. Thank you. Even I missed you all. And I'm back with very difficult rook and games. I hope you all don't mind. So this is why to play and win. Mm 
Thank you for following Baba Black Sheep. <laughs> Remember um song it's song Now in this position we can uh, sacrifice one pawn, it's also okay. Yes, this is from Doretsky's. You must have learned this book many times, you instantly recognize the position. So we have to try to... we have to... Not try, we have to avoid the stalemates in this position because again we saw that black can sacrifice the rook and um, make a draw. We can start with rook b6 to avoid checks. Yes, winning plan would be something like rook b6, then play g7 and try to sacrifice the rook here, and then exchange and go to a winning pawn endgame somehow. I like first move rook b6 because g7 will lead to some checks, and I don't like. You see, g7 then check, and wherever the king moves. He can keep giving checks like this, rook h6, rook g6, rook f6, and it's very annoying. No, not here, not here, of course, he can go back. Not here, <laughs> here he can just take it. But these checks I don't like, so if I was white, I would start with first rook b6. To avoid these checks and then push the pawns. Okay, let me see. Yes, rook b6, rook f8, g5. Of course, he cannot move the rook because of this checkmate. He is uh, stuck with passive defense. Rook a8, g7. And now just a rook f6 with this idea. So black waits, then rook f8 check, and we know this is a winning pawn endgame after king f7, and this will queen. Okay, next is an instructive example. White king e7, black king g7, pawn e6, rook d1, black rook a2. This pawn is going this side. Now we come to positions with the king cut off from the enemy king. So if this is white to play, they write white win because white can give check first on g1 and then the king has to move and this is winning position for white. So he gives check, king h7, 
king f7 and slowly the king will move wait let me move and play it one second i will change it to white to play so if this is white to play white wins after check king h7 King f7 with this check idea. Check then king e8. And we can build bridge slowly. Now e7 is the threat. White waits. We play e7. And there are different ways for white to win us. One that we saw before was rook g4. But the simple rook e1 also wins. Now we just move the king away. And this will be queen. If he starts giving checks, then we just move away. And next will be queen. So white to play. White just first cut off the king. And then uh, moves the pawn. But what if this position is black to play? So now we will change it to black to play. And now black has the move. With black on move the evaluation changes. I guess he will start giving checks on this side. Yes, rook a7 check. Rook a7 check. Rook d7. If instead he plays king e8, thank you for following. If instead if he plays king e8, then black plays king f6. And the pawn cannot be saved. This pawn cannot be saved because rook e1 will be met with rook e7 check. And this pawn is lost. That is why after this check white tries to play rook d7. And the, they say that the simple defensive method for black is to keep the rook on a8. And to prepare side checks when white tries to push the pawn. He has to control this 8th rank. If he plays somewhere else, let's say rook a6. It's a big mistake because white will give check. And after king f6, he plays e7. If check, he has this. And now the threat is king f8, king f8, so if he gives check, we can play rook d8, and here we can give check, and then move to d7, and next move, move the king and promote. So that is why here the only move of defense, only move to make a draw is to play rook a8, and stop the king from going to the 8th rank. So let's say white plays rook d8. Does rook e2 here for black that doesn't draw? Which position in the end you mean? I don't know where rook e2. Okay, so white plays rook d8. And gives check rook a7 in d6 check in e5 check and whenever he brings the rook in between stopping these checks we just play rook a8 again and white cannot make progress here rook d7 check then king g6 because we just don't let white king go to f6 after king f8, king f6. So we just stop this king and play king g6. The reason for draw was the position of the black rook. It was placed on the long side. So we know that the pawn 
creates one side long and one side short. So black should try to keep the king on the short side and the rook on the long side. And that is why black is able to draw this endgame. So next is king e7, king g7, pawn e6, a rook a7, and a rook b8. Let us examine another position, not elementary, but quite an important one. White to play, and this time white is able to win. So it's a big analysis. Let's see what white does here. So not, they say not first move rook a1 trying to check here. It's a mistake because black will just check on the sides. So white has to control the side checks. And now why this instant is in this situation white is winning. So white starts with king d6 check. King f6 and they say after king d7 um, black is in zugzwang here. Because even though the rook is on the long side we are controlling all these squares with white. If he moves the rook away then e7. If he plays king g6 and now we can play rook a1 because if check we can just attack the rook. So black played king g7 and king e7. Thank you for following. King g6. So they say that black should not give up this control of this because if black plays the rook move, let's say anywhere on the b file, like instantly plays rook a8 and then he can play the king and push the pawn. So black has to keep the rook controlling this. So he played king g6. And now we move the rook. King c7. So the king is attacking the rook now. Hello, Aryan. Rook b2. And a white plays rook e1. Good move. With the idea to push this pawn. Rook c2. King d7. King e8. And we know this is winning after e7 because now checks then the king moves away. So many ideas to learn from this uh, instructive example. So if you are trying to defend, always keep the rook on the long side, control the last rank. And if we are on the stronger side, we have to stop these checks and try to push the pawn somehow to e7. Yes, Aryan, after many days. Many days means 2-3 days, but yes. Now we will look at a tragic comedy. King h4, King f6, Rook e6, Pawn on e3, and white rook on b1. Black to play.
black to play and win. Moving pawn, so pawn is going this side. After e2, white will have to play rook e1. Thank you for following the chosen one. So they say here the win for black is not very complicated, it's straightforward. Why black should move the pawn to e2 with this idea to make a queen and after rook e1 black should just cut off this king, cut off this king and now the king cannot go and attack this pawn and after king g4 black can play king e5 and white can just resign because he cannot move the rook and after king moves Black can go, go towards the rook in many ways. Okay, king f4. Or even king d4 is possible. And after king moves, king f3 and king f2. And black wins very easily. But during this game, this is a game between Ulman and Gulko. Black missed this and black played king f5. This looks very natural, but in fact, they say that it is a blunder. Because now the king comes to g3 and towards the pawn, king g3, king e4, king g2. So you see white has kept the king on the short side of the pawn and the rook on the long side. King g2, rook g6 check. King f1, king f3. And here, thank you for following King F3. And here the way to draw is to play Rook B2, what we saw before. Rook B2 and when Rook goes to anywhere, we just give check and Black cannot take because it's a stalemate and when Black goes, we move the Rook back. And this is how white makes a draw after king f3 with rook b2. Of course we cannot make a passive defense because it's a central pawn and black will win. If we just keep the rook uh, passively, black can play uh, even e2. e2 is just winning, e2 and rook g1. So that is why rook b2 was only draw and if White plays rook b3, black just plays rook e6, and now tries to go to h1, in g1, rook g6, and white uh, loses this position because king f1, e2 check, and rook g1, or even if king goes to h5, there is e2, and black wins. So the correct defense was to play rook b2 here. Rook b2 instead of rook b3. Rook b2 with this defensive idea and white makes a draw.
<laughs> Rook and game is very tricky. King on d7, pawn e6, rook a6, king g7, and black rook e1. <laughs> All end games are difficult, yes? All right, this is black to play. So let us just try to understand the ideas in this in this examples. Yes, black to play and draw. Somehow I want to play king f6. King f6 looks interesting for me. If e7 then we go king f7. What do you think about king f6? Checkmate nahi karoge hum log ya haar hi nahi manenge. You play till the end, yes? Until the checkmate. Nobody resigns. That's why we have to know this end games very well. I don't see how white will play after king f6. King f6 if he plays e7 check king f7 and now how to defend this pawn. Okay, let me check. Yes, king f6 could move. Black should take measures against strengthening white position after king e8 and e7. And if he waits, let's say with rook c6, we also wait rook e2. Rook d6. Rook e1. And uh, the try which white can play is to play rook d2. He played with rook d6 so that he can avoid these checks. Uh, so rook d2 with the idea rook f2 check. And now we go to the long side, rook a1, good move. And take these checks on the side. Only now when the white rook has abandoned both the a file and the 6th rank, does black undertake the side attack. Check. In g7. And after e7, we start giving side checks and make a draw side checks and no way for white to defend from this and thus it is a draw now we started this um we started this with lucena position and now this one next one is also a very famous position and it is called as um the philidor position can you go back three foremost okay one second Thank you for following. One minute, I need to arrange it again. Thank you for following chain.
Okay, so this was the position. We started with king f6. So, where do you want to suggest a move? This speed dota. Hello, welcome. Welcome to the endgame series. When white rook comes to d2, okay. So, he just played rook d6. And we were waiting. Okay, doesn't matter the exact moves. And we played rook here, trying to get the side checks. Then he gave us check, we played king g7, e7 and side checks. When you play tactics, we do everything. What if black rook takes pawn? If black rook takes the pawn here, then we can give this check. And now king has to move. If he moves, the rook will be lost. And if king e5, then there is this check and this rook will be lost. That's why that pawn can't be taken. Okay. Um... Also here e7 not possible, e7 not possible because black gives this check and after king d6 again don't take this pawn because of rook f2, we continue give checks and that's how we make a draw. Hello Ashwin, welcome. So the next one is called as the Philidor's position, also very famous and a must-know endgame. So these two are must-know endgame positions, Lucena position and the Philidor position. So in the Lucena position, we build a breach with the rook and a win. And this Philidor position, the pawn is on the fifth rank. And in this, we are on the weaker side and we have to try to make a draw. So if you are studying rook endgames, these two positions are must know and the basis, the basic to the more complicated rook endgames. So if you want to start learning rook endgames, this is where you should begin. Black to play and draw. This is so called Philidor position. The famous French chess player was the first to demonstrate as early in the 18th century, the correct method of defense. You know, I got this Philidor position recently in my own game, which, um, which was quite an important game uh, in one of my tournaments. And I was also streaming that time. So if you were there, you, you might remember it. Thank you for following. You might remember. And I was playing the strong side, it means with the pawn, and black was not able to defend it, and I won that game. So having this knowledge is very, <laughs> can be very useful. Yes, of course, I know. I know all the top chess players, of course. Yes, you also got, yes, in your game, Sashwin. This is very common. These two positions are very common, Lucena and Philidor. Rook b5 or rook b6. Now, there is one... Um, strategy we should know what white is going to do here if this position is a white to play white will play king f6 and you have to choose 
from which side you give checks because after white plays king f6 if you give checks from here white plays e6 and there are no more checks to make a draw and next he will play rook a8 and lot of threats after king f6 if you go king, rook f1 he goes king e6 and hides the king and again no more checks so if this is white to play after king f6 black is in trouble if you start with rook f1 again king e6 and rook a8 check if rook b5 also king f6 if check then e6 so we just have to stop king f6 that's it this is the only move for white to get us in trouble so we just stop this if rook h1 i guess also king f6 we have to be sure i don't know king g5 also tricky there might be different ways but the best way according to philidor is to just stop king f6 by playing rook b6 by playing rook b6 we just stop the king from advancing with rook b6 and then white king cannot go to the sixth rank and whenever he moves the pawn on e6 so when he pushes this pawn then we go back and this pawn cannot hold white king from any checks and now there will be endless checks like that king f6 then this check e5 check and endless check and white it will be a draw and if white tries to bring the rook in the game let's say with rook a5 check and you know try to do something like this we can even exchange this and reach a drawn pawn endgame so this is a philidor's defense and the correct way to the easiest way to make a draw is to play rook b6 and only when he moves the pawn to e6 let him play whatever he wants but only when he moves the pawn to e6 we go back and start giving checks because as long as the pawn stands on e5 the king has this shelter of the pawn when we give this check that is why when he plays e6 we start giving checks from behind if the pawn stood at e5 the white king would have a refugee from vertical checks but as soon as the pawn has stepped forward the refugee does not exist anymore and if this is white to play they say white wins after king f6 and now black has to choose between one of these checks and next move white saves uh, from the checks Okay, now after, so this was a composition in the 18th century by Philidor and they say that many years later, later on, the second defensive method in Philidor position was discovered. So this was long time ago and then there were, there were a lot of developments in endgame theory and there was developed a second uh, drawing technique for black. So the new theory suggests that black can also make a draw like this even when white gets to e6. So this is the new theory with uh, help of engines and you know exact play. And now whenever the king goes to e6 there is this threat of rook a8 check and black just runs in f8. Yes endgame is really difficult. Hello Danish, how are you doing? So look at this a recent endgame um, technique which was developed recently, the second defensive idea. Rook a8 check, king g7. So now the rook on e1 is important they say because white cannot play king d7 here. If the rook was somewhere else, 
white can go king d7 if the rook was on d1 he can go king e7 so we are stopping both this moves king e7 and king d7 and if white plays king to d6 and black plays king f7 stopping e6 and if he goes rook a7 check we again go king e8 and e6 we know is a draw and if he plays king e6 you see what just happened here we just repeated this position and king f8 again so very interesting repetition of moves rook a8 king g7 king d6 king f7 and a very interesting sorry very interesting repetition of moves like that and this is the second defensive technique in the philidor position and they say here they say here even king d8 will be able to make a draw with the same idea but it's uh, far more logical to play the king on the short side does this work on the b or g file you have a good question and the next position is exactly based on your question thinking if we can convert this position into lucena somehow uh, to make that happen our king should be able to get control of the uh, winning square and we should be able to move the pawn but right now the black is stopping us to make any progress at all once king reaches g g2 i think g7 Yes, but we are not able to move the pawn at all, even to e6. That's the problem. Yes, rook b6 and rook e1 are both.